Hello everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 16 through 20, where it is written. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to him, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And they began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Jesus, whether well, in a different time period on a different continent, had habits that were not that different from ours. It was his custom on the Sabbath day to go to the synagogue. Part of the synagogue service was reading uh, from the sacred scripture. We go to church every Sunday. What do we read from it on church? The scriptures. It was a routine of his life and it was a routine of our life. And sometimes when you get into routine, it's just, yeah, whatever, another day, another dollar. You don't really think about things. But Isaiah, in his later parts, gets very apocalyptic. And I don't mean apocalyptic as, oh, it's chaos and everything's terrible. But apocalypse, in its original Greek meaning, was to have the forces of, you know, basically the gods, so to speak, or divine forces break into everyday life. That's what apocalypse meant in the original Greek. So Isaiah, in that sense, is very apocalyptic. We have our day-in, day-out life, and God's breaking into it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me with the Holy Spirit. Good news will be proclaimed to the poor, the people at the bottom. The captives, they're released. Blind people can see. It's not medically possible what's going to happen. The oppressed are free. This is the year the Lord's happy with us. Good news all around. Isaiah is full of such language. Actually, early on, Isaiah chapter 2. The nations will come to Jerusalem. It's written. They'll beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up arms against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. How is that possible? With the help of God, the world that the Messiah is bringing, foretold all the way back in Genesis 3. I mean, the text our Lord is reading is a Disney ending on steroids. And he reads it. He goes back to the attendant and says, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This is the world you're living in today. Are you serious? The super ultimate Disney ending is our today's reality? And it goes double for us in the church. Jesus Christ is risen today. Today, if we were if our earthly life were to end, we'd be with him right now. It's a good thing we don't know how good that is because we would not want to fulfill our responsibilities here if we knew how good that was. Think about that. And that's reality. So basically, I take care of myself because Laura and Mary and Teresa need me around for a long time. But even I know our time at our Savior Penolds, I've been here six years, so it's been two years. I'm here for a while yet, but God knows when. Same with any of us. What we're doing right now, when our life will end, we don't know. But we do know. In the end, Jesus Christ has us. And the end of time, it won't be some apocalyptic nuclear global war. Jesus will return. He'll make the entire world right. And his love's inescapable for each person. How should that inform our lives? Fearful? Terrified? Or grateful? Loving? The answer is obvious. Good news. That's what the gospel means. And it's real and it's coming. Let's close with a word of prayer and may we never forget that. Lord, may we
may never forget your love, your mercy, your grace, that at the end of all things, you are there to make things eternal. May ever be grateful to you, God, and never lose sight of this. Amen.